Yeah, thanks for joining us in our talk, Civil Infrastructure Platform. Um, we will tell you something about a project we recently started and um, currently building up, promoting it. And um, I think it could be interesting what currently happens, where Linux is used today and in future. And um, just to briefly introduce myself, I'm Urs Gleim, I'm with Siemens. Um, we are a central unit providing Linux for various Siemens products internally. And um, Yoshitaki Kobayashi um, from Toshiba. Hi. <coughs> Hi, I'm Yoshi Kobayashi, and I'm also doing this exactly similar stuff. I'm leading a Linux project uh, to provide a Linux environment for all products inside the Toshiba. So that's we, why we are joined together and doing a this kind of launch of this project uh, together. So thank you very much. Thank you. So let's maybe start with a brief introduction so you might ask yourself what is civil infrastructure, what is meant with this. So generally we are speaking about systems which um, supervise and control our daily lives. So mainly systems we do not see, which are invisible, which are built into trains, which, which are doing the traffic control, um, built in healthcare devices or um, very current hype topic is how to distribute the power if you talk about renewable energies for example power plants um, and of course smart cities all the devices you have in the houses you have in the infrastructure that's what we call civil infrastructure systems in japan sometimes it's called social infrastructure systems uh, means the same in germany we say just infrastructure and um, the companies who are involved here, which are Toshiba, Hitachi, Siemens, CodeThinker and Platform, are active in building these systems. And um, the good news is that even today, and you might be surprised where Linux is already used, so we have it in, in transportation, train control systems, uh, all kinds of rail automation, um, up to the things you can see, which are the automatic t ticket gates, the controllers in the trains controlling everything uh, you can see and you cannot see. In energy automation, um, we have uh, power plant control, turbine control, um, for example. In industry automation, um, you see just some examples um, of controllers we use, controller switches or CNC controls, this is the devices who, who if, you, if you have a smartphone with an aluminum case, uh, who, who do these things at Foxconn, for example. And you see some of these examples. We have a booth outside uh, on the first floor. Um, you, ca you can see some of the examples there. So you can look at them, you can touch them. Um, healthcare, okay, we didn't bring an MRT device. It was too big, um, but... Uh, also there, these devices are running for more than 10 years on Linux already. Um, building automation is things, controllers controlling light, HVAC and blinds and whatever you have in big buildings. And um, so you see this is a great variety, but these systems have some things in common. And um, these are the requirements which are different to other systems where Linux is currently used. If, if you think of current IoT architectures of cloud and so on, they have requirements what we call industrial greatness. And um, this is basically reliability. These systems have to work 24-7. Um, we just want that, uh, we, 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 we do not want to recognize them, they just have to work. Functional safety is uh, is a topic for many of the systems. You, so you could imagine you do not want to that cr trains crashes, for example. So functional safety is everything which harms people. So if the if the system does not work correctly, um, people can be injured or even die. And this is a big thing because there is a lot of effort done to ensure functional safety, to certify this, and so on. Um, security, of course, gets a 
or is a, a, an important topic because you do not want anybody to control your trains, your houses, your power plants. And uh, so there's a special or there's a high emphasis on, on security topics now these days. And last but not least, uh, we, we, we are controlling and we, are, we, we, we have a lot of control loops. And uh, so in most of the cases, we have real time capabilities. Another big difference to, to other products is uh, the product cycles and the lifetime so if you if you think of your smartphone maybe you throw this away after two to four years and in this kind of systems um, we talk about factor 10 roughly so we are thinking in decades and um, what if we, if we look at, at these requirements um, one thing is uh, what's also different from other systems is that uh, they are not not updated every week or every every month so um, and, and this has a reason so mainly um, all these industrial greatness requirements shall not be jeopardized so the update strategy is very conservative and they are only updated if really necessary if there are security problems for example um, and it's also sometimes not so easy to upgrade them nowadays this is changing because you need physical access to get to the device. And um, so this is an important topic and we will come back to this. On the other hand, we also have the same problems as every other company. We have to reduce our maintenance costs. We have to reduce the development costs and the time. Um, so this is similar to, to other businesses. Um, looking at the systems today and comparing at how they evolve, you see things are changing. So if, if you look at the systems which were built like 10, 15 years ago, they were very proprietary, very closed. Um, homegrown operating systems were used and now these systems get more and more complex and you cannot afford really to do everything on your own. It doesn't make sense at all. So of course Linux is used, I mentioned this. Other open source projects are used and um, systems become more and more open. So um, because people want to extend functionality, even if the systems are already in the field, good example is analytics. So people start to collect data, they put analytics functionality on the device to react on the data. Uh, but in many cases we are still learning. So people want to exchange the analytics functionality over time and want to to want to upgrade this and this is something which was not done before and this means openness on the other hand there are systems with customer specific extensions and the customer want to do it on their own so another change is really that we go away from standalone systems which were not, not connected um, which is easier for security of course uh, but as i said you need physical access really to, to to update these devices for example you need physical access to configure these devices to provision these devices and this changes this gets more and more connected uh, so um, we all know what happened in the area of consumer electronics what happens in iot and all these architectures and ideas go into the systems as well and um, so this is the reason why it's really important to, to set on standards, to not reinvent the wheel over the time again and again. So that's the reason why we um, said it's, it's really time, that's the title of the time for, for, for creating um, a, a joint project. Um, and not only inside one company, but also joint forces of different companies. So we've seen this in other areas. So a lot of things are going on in the IoT area. We know, for example, several efforts in the automotive area where really OEMs, which did not talk before, now work together in, in one project. And this is basically the same approach for these industrial grade infrastructure devices. So one thing is really to put together uh, from the ground up, from the operating system, a system, a platform which can be used by everybody. And these are things uh, which are not 
differentiating our product. So it's 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 things which are commodity. Everybody has to do this, and um, but there's also room for improvement. Like for example, bringing things upstream. We have a lot of off-tree code currently, and um, so uh, this is the chance really to get this forward. The point in the middle, maintenance costs I already mentioned. Um, we are currently maintaining several internal, several versions of the Linux kernel, several distributions, several configurations. And um, even inside the companies, um, it's, uh, it's now needed because we have more and more systems on Linux to, to harmonize this. And uh, that it also makes sense to share this uh, with other companies. And uh, last but not least, I said uh, the architectures are also changing. So we have influences from IoT. Um, we, we get analytics on. Everybody is now talking about artificial intelligence, however this is used there. Um, but the thing is that we really need more complex software stacks uh, to, to, to run these uh, today's uh, applications on. And um, so we really have to have to build a platform to, to run this. So the statement is civil, civ uh, civil infrastructure systems require a super long-term maintenance, basically because I, I'll come to the li lifetimes again. Uh, industrial grade embedded Linux uh, platform for the smart digital future. I would like to go back, no, uh, just just to summarize this, the, the, the thing is what we are building here is a base layer, uh, as I said, a, a platform starting from the Linux kernel and evalu evol evolving from this and really filling the gaps between what is currently there in the open source projects and what is additionally needed for, 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 for industry. It's not a specification project, so we provide the implementation. And um, yeah, we want to get more and more companies in, providing building blocks, providing tools. And um, uh, so we'll, we'll come to this, how this will, 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 will grow in the f future and how the roadmap is. The initial focus is setting, of course, up, agreeing on, on, on the versions, agreeing on the tools, uh, the build, uh, build tools, the, the integration test tools and so on. Um, but the initial benefit we will get out of this is a long-term maintained base system. And um, I said this several times now, super long-term maintained, and I would, would like to explain a little bit um, why we do this. So let's look at some numbers. So if you, if you look at railway technology, for example, so this is this has been there for a while. This shows a little bit um, how long these uh, systems stay in the field. Um, if you look at these, um, they have quite a few years development time. So mostly between three and five years development time, ensuring all the functional safety measures, for example, we have to do there. So it's very, very slow, uh, the development because of the additional safety requirements. Um, and then there are, in this case, different railway companies, there are international specific rules, and uh, then these systems have to be adapted. So this takes, again, two years or more. And um, we have then really to deal with the certification authorities to ensure that the systems in this case are allowed to use in this context. So in Germany, it's for example, TÜV, Bahn, Bundesamt and others. And um, this takes again a year um, to, to, to also run all the tests, to do all the safety argumentation, to provide all the documents and so on. And this is an important point. Um, you have to do this again and again whenever you change something of the system. So we have three months and more we need for recertifying an existing system. So if we just want to do a firmware update, exchange the kernel, we have to do the certification again. Of course, this depends highly on the amount of changes, 
um, but in the end we have to recertify the whole system. And yeah, last but not least, I already said this, uh, time span is 25 to 50 years. So next example, that's even older. <laughs> so this is the pre-computer era. Um, so don't take this too serious. Um, but the, the, the numbers are about the same. So we have three to five years development time. We have uh, customer specific extensions again. Um, we have heard some different numbers, like how long does this product have to be supplied, like six to eight years, um, uh, 15 years plus maintenance. And uh, again, we have lifetimes about up to 50, uh, up to 60 years in, in power plants, for example. Depends, of course, on the systems um, we uh, on, 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 the, on the system we provide on the product. So there are a lot of systems in one power plant. Some are stay for long, some don't stay for so long. Okay, um, you can see an example at our booth. Uh, this is a power plant control. I'm not going into details here. Come to our booth and uh, we'll explain this. Um, yeah? Yeah, the question was if we have uh, these long certification times for updates, um, do, do we have a big window for, for exploits? Um, yes. <laughs> yes, we have. Um, actually, um, I think this, this, this has to change. For, for certain security things, but we'll come to the point um, uh, how we do these updates. And if it's about security, the strategy is really to, to really do a small security fix and this very quickly. And uh, we are currently in the process of learning uh, together with the authorization authorities um, how to bring in these uh, updates very quickly. But the thing is, um, we have a chance if it's really a small patch. Um, we don't have a chance to, to shorten this um, if, we, if we just switch to a newer kernel version, for example. And uh, now we are back to this topic. And don't get me wrong, I'm not telling we are maintaining one kernel for 50 years. This will not work. Um, but we, will, we need it longer than the current efforts in long-term maintenance uh, are, um, are dealing with the kernels and we, we, will, we will come to this. So getting back to the kernels, uh, why do we do this? Okay, clear fear of regression, performance regression, you all know this uh, if you have a smartphone or uh, also depending on the operating system on your, on your computer. Um, so every new system is slower than the old one or it happens from time to time at least. Uh, stability, okay, sure, we talked about this. Recertification costs. Um, another thing is um, we are working, mostly we are starting up with, with uh, Linux or BSPs provided by uh, silicon vendors. And um, so what we do, we take this and uh, Depending on the quality, we, 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 we work on this. We, we try to bring things mainline as well. But we have a lot of different versions. So it harmonized a little bit because of the LSK and LTSI efforts. So people start start there, or silicon vendors very often start there. Um, but even using those, it's, it's quite a variety of versions. And we would like to have less versions in the, in the, in the field. Um, fourth, it's not nice, but still we have Windows-specific code. We have forks. We had out-of-tree out of code. We are internally working on, on bringing whatever makes sense uh, upstream. Um, but uh, in the reality, I would expect that still we have some of tree code in, in future. And uh, this is also a reason this is always a lot of effort to bring this to, to new version and to maintain this for a lot of versions. So the scope is, as I said, we start from the from the kernel ground up, 
and we add things we need. So it will be at the beginning very basic, like the kernel, real-time support, and then we add some more libraries uh, on top of this. Um, an important point I would like to mention is uh, the tools go along with the software stack on the device. So it's not enough to just provide and maintain the device stack. We also have to do a consistent uh, tool stack, which also can be used over the years and um, uh, enables us to maintain the whole thing. Um, the right pillar concepts, uh, Yes, I said it's not a specification project, but we try to also um, provide documents which help us to do the safety certification later on. But that's a little bit later on the on the on the roadmap currently. So, what kind of systems uh, are we focusing on? So, if we look at the processors and memory sizes, it's ba basically the systems where you can run. Uh, well, let's call it a normal Linux uh, with without pain. So uh, starting at a device class of, of Cortex M4 and up. So um, if you compare this to, to other boards, it's about the, the, the magnet order of magnitude of, of a Raspberry Pi. And it goes up to really big systems, um, which you might not consider to be really embedded systems. It's really big servers. Uh, but they are also special purpose uh, computers for built into devices like MRT scanners, for example. So this is the, the whole range. And um, we will start with some reference platforms, or we started with, with, uh, with PCs uh, at the moment, uh, but we will come to the, to the infrastructure we, we, we are currently building up. Um, so the test infrastructure will be built in a way that we can really connect a lot of different products and hardware in the different comp companies as a distributed um, distributed uh, integration tool chain. So with this, I would like to hand over. Oh, another question. Yes, the question was, uh, do we have different platforms and do we test different kernels on different processor architectures, different platforms? <laughs> yes, definitely. We are, we are building this up in a distributed way. So we, we are not having one room because this is a lot of overhead to put all the devices in one room. So we keep this uh, the infrastructure distributed. So currently in all the participating companies, we have some targets set up uh, which which are uh, which are used for the for the integration and uh, regression tests okay thanks maybe we can talk later about this huh? so, <laughs> so um, I take over from this slide um, uh, currently, uh, we just set it up uh, our new project, and uh, there are some uh, new members, uh, which include uh, Hitachi, Siemens, Toshiba, and working with uh, CodeSync and the platform. So uh, each company is uh, uh, funding some budget for uh, to pro to uh, for the to hire CIP developers for maintenance and also and also each company uh, for. Uh, Developer will be joining this project, so um, to uh, because uh, we should work uh, to solve our issues, and this kind of development work has to be done with upstream projects such as uh, 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 some distribution project and also uh, the other projects and so on. And our first focus is uh, super to establish an in uh, super long term support, and so. We, when uh, we decide something, we should uh, collect some uh, source code from the upstream and all, uh, maintain for a long time. So this is uh, what we would like to do in this uh, CIP project. And we have a policy and 
one important policy, and this is upstream first policy. Um, even we maintain uh, for super long term, such as uh, more than 10 years, but we would like to have any effort um, going to the upstream and then backport it. Um, if we don't take this uh, policy, we will have uh, serious issues. For example, if we, are, we have a local changes just for the CIP and the upstream changes are same um, fixes later on, that will cause a serious conflict. So we don't want to have this kind of conflict. That we would like to work with upstream. <laughs> again, uh, this is a development process again. Um, Ur shows a uh, yes, a power plant example and also railway example, and the first five uh, this line is a timeline and usually uh, civil infrastructure system related system takes as uh, long such as uh, three years to five years. So when we consider about the development BSP development, it usually um, are yeah, done at the beginning to support our specific hardware. And typical LTA support period is two years. So that means when we release the product, it already expired for the LTS support period. And I can say we, we need to um, provide uh, such kind of products for 20 to 50 years sometime. And this is a huge gap between current LTS and our requirements. So, and sometimes also hardware replacements happens. And what we are, uh, what we currently have is uh, some uh, LTS project is a um, community have a LTS, long-term support corners, it support two years. And also um, LTS, uh, long-term support initiative also support, uh, yeah, around two years, the same as uh, LTS. So, but uh, our requirement is we would like to have uh, 10 to more years support. And currently what we are doing is we are doing by ourselves or by, uh, even inside the company, each department doing by themselves. So that means uh, many, um, Similar efforts we uh, we have, and so that so that causes uh, quite uh, serious issues. Yeah, because uh, we cannot manage all staffs um, inside the company also. So what we would like to do is we would like to join and uh, and development one common base layer which can be support more than ten years. So at the beginning we also need to have some uh, futures. But it has to be support more 10 years. So that means yeah, we currently planning to allow to have some backport effort in inside the CIP kernel. Um, but usually the kernel development is quite fast. So if we um, would like to use backport from the newer feature from the, for example, five year later, it can be, cannot be done. So to avoid uh, this kind of issues, we have uh, yeah, something like a two or two, three years uh, release period for newer version kernel. But um, at the, before the new uh, releasing, uh, we would like to have some uh, multiple merge windows to allow to backporting. And then um, after the back, uh, backporting period also, we have a super long term support period for the security fix and critical bug fixes. And uh, today uh, we have uh, one important announcement. So this version 4.4 will become a CIP super long term support kernel version. Um, there are some selection criteria um, because um, before deciding this kernel version, we have a lot of discussion inside the CIP uh, kernel. But um, 
to decide the uh, versions, we have to consider about uh, our requirements also. Of course, uh, because this is a collaborative project uh, based, um, funded by the companies. And, but at least we should have LTS version. And I think they synchronize with LTSI. So and unfortunately, uh, this year LTSI is uh, not happened. So we should consider the latest LTS versions for the Paganel versions. And it can be used for the upcoming products. Uh, as you see in the um, previous slide, our development, our BSP development is usually done very at the beginning. So we have to consider about the upcoming projects can be used 4.4 and also need to support for a uh, long time. And next SLT version, kernel version is not concretely fixed yet, but um, it will be announced in two to three years because um, yeah, if we support only one kernel version for more than 10 years, we, uh, this is not really, um, this is not can be done. So, and at that timing, we would like to synchronize with LTSI kernel versions uh, because uh, we are doing a similar effort. So that's why we would like to do that. And we have a super long term stable team inside the CIP. Um, we already announced this uh, stuff um, at the LinuxCon North America and. The uh, Ben Hutching from, uh, from CodeSync, uh, he's a first super long term kernel maintainer for CIP project. So he's a very well known uh, as a Debian contributor, and he's a maintain, currently maintaining uh, two kernel versions for Debian uh, kernel. So, and so Ben will uh, be supported by one additional developer uh, because um, yeah, only one uh, persons uh, doing uh, super long term support, and this is uh, not safe enough. So we would like to have, have uh, two um, developers uh, to maintain the corners. And this work has already started in the September uh, last month, and we are currently setting up a super long term support development and validation processes. And also, uh, yeah, we need to have some uh, repository or something, some kind of infrastructures uh, for the SLTS kernel. And this slide shows our uh, plan, and we will have a development process will be uh, similar to LTSI because uh, we would like to have some bug ports uh, from the upstream kernel. And, but one important stuff is that uh, we have to uh, consider about regressions. So that means if the backport changes the kernel API or ABI, uh, it will be not acceptable for CIP kernel. And then uh, we will uh, do some validation period. Um, currently, we are establishing a kernel test infrastructure. Uh, I can um, show you uh, latest, uh, later, right? So, and to validate the kernel, uh, we also um, and do setting up the te um, testing infrastructure. And the testing goal is uh, we would like to uh, perform the testing on the real hardware, not on the VM, um, because we are using uh, such kind of real hardware for the projects, and yeah, that's why. So, and yeah, just said, uh, we just focusing on the CIP reference platform, but reference platform is not decided yet. So this is uh, quite open to discussions. And if some, someone want to bring uh, uh, yeah, your hardware for testing, it uh, might be uh, very welcome. So, but uh, yeah, and the important thing is a critical fix is uh, we need to be fixed as soon as possible. And if we uh, try to use, uh, try to functional testing such as a lo such requires long time to be uh, for to done is uh, not uh, a bit difficult. And also this kind of uh, effort uh, already doing by the other. Uh, 
projects such as OSADL for latency issues, we would like we don't want to duplicate such kind of effort. Maybe uh, we should uh, work together. So, and the last important step is we would like to share the testing results for our in our not only uh, in CIP but also we would like to publish that. And we have already setting up a kernel CI instance uh, just for local, uh, just working for local one, but uh, it is uh, based on the uh, Balgrain based and easy to. Uh, I think uh, you can pick up the uh, this environment from the GitHub, I think, <laughs> and yeah, you uh, you can start to testing for the with the kernel CI. So, and the other consideration is uh, yeah, this is uh, for the kernel, and the other consideration is we have to pick up some user space packages, and this is currently. Um, yeah, ongoing uh, for the selections, and um, but uh, we would like to start uh, as minimum as we want because uh, our uh, fo initial focus is uh, we are mainly for the controlling systems. So that kind of systems not require such a big uh, set of the packages. So this is uh, some uh, one example uh, which includes a car, uh, Linux kernel with a preemptory patch, and the user land includes, for example, bootloader and busybox and uh, basic library, something like a GBC and uh, and security reasons for OpenSSL or something like that. So this is quite small one, but. Even it is small, we have to consider about the build tools also. But these build tools are only for using development, not working on the uh, device on it. So that means uh, this part is have to be support for a long time, but the other part is uh, have to be keep it for reproducible. So. Yeah, we are just starting, and st we start uh, very small packages, then extend it to the uh, yeah based on the, our requirements. So, and this slide was we are what we are currently under uh, discussion. So CIP should collaborate. We would like to collaborate with other projects for uh, maintenance efforts and also development effort. So for just uh, looking for the kernel project, oh, LSK is also doing some backports from the upstream, and the other distributions such as uh, Ubuntu uh, and other SOC SS vendor also are using a uh, 4.4 currently, and um, we would like to uh, collaborate such kind of project. And the next one is a uh, yeah, selection of the uh, futures for backporting, but I. Uh, Preemptality is, as you know, not upstream yet, but most of our industrial companies strongly uh, relies on uh, preemptality future. So, but um, this future is not upstream, so that means the preemptality might be uh, merged into a separate branch and for testing. So, um, probably uh, CIP have two branches which include uh, uh, preemptality and not include uh, preemptality. And both uh, branches will be testing. And this is uh, currently under discussion. And also, uh, security is uh, most, uh, one of the most important features. So we direct to backport, probably a KSPP effort. And something like uh, other stuff is testing, kernel maintenance policy, and user and package selections. So this is a milestone. Um, I don't have enough time for just quick, uh, just a service for to, uh, this year, and we are deciding a lot of stuff, and and we would like to uh, finish uh, this kind of uh, establishment in uh, this year, and next year will be uh, more development will be happens. So, and this is a kind of uh, commercial <laughs> for the uh, to yeah. To ask our joint, to, uh, please uh, join uh, to the civil infrastructure platform. And current member is Hitachi Siemens Toshiba, and working with CodeSync and platform. So, why join is uh, yeah, 
we uh, we will provide uh, yeah uh, industrial grade uh, Linux base layer. So if you are using uh, this kind of base layer, um, maybe uh, you can say uh, this is a CIP base layer and um, uh, stable and uh, yeah. Unstable and also uh, have a long term support period by CIP or something. So, this is uh, maybe um, you can convince to your boss or something like that. So, and this is the contact information. The important stuff is uh, we have a website, uh, www.cipproject.org, and also uh, yeah, inside uh, this CI, uh, CIP website, you can go to CIP Wiki. And, um, <laughs> The development effort will be uh, open to the CIP mailing list and also CIP wiki, and please join to the CIP dev, uh, mailing list. Yeah, uh, we now we are open for the uh, kernel development. We decided, and it, and many uh, development will be uh, happens in this mailing list and CIP wiki. Um, please come uh, to join. So, thank you very much for that. And any questions? Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know that uh, Greg Hartman is maintained, uh, but uh, LTS version uh, do not allow to feature backporting. So, yeah. Uh, I think a CIP would like to collaborate with Greg Crow Hartman because, um, yeah, during his maintenance period, we also have, uh, you know, back, uh, have some effort for the backporting. So that's kind of a security bug fix and the security fixes should be go to the, the Greg Crow Hartman. But the other stuff, yeah, we have to consider, for example, KSPP effort uh, need to backport from the upstream. Yeah, that kind of uh, stuff uh, have to be managed uh, by behatching. Please. Um, I'm, I'm smiling because this is uh, all I heard a lot of time in industry because they had currently all the homegrown proprietary operating systems and I said if we, if we go to Linux um, we have a common platform already. Um, as I said um, we will improve the security because we, um, we have shorter reaction times, we can do small fixes, even on old systems, which are without changing the whole thing. And um, I think this increases security much more than just um, hide behind some proprietary solutions, which are not secure at all. Uh, the systems are um, really isolated uh, from the rest of the world. Uh, they are not connected to corporate networks and uh, to internet. And in practice, the most risk uh, is uh, business issues like uh, fire safety, uh, system not reacting to, to fire. This is a, a higher risk and uh, what people do, they develop small fixes and the customer and the producer have to agree that the risk of not doing thing is higher than the risk of installing this. And um, in the process of the previous certification of the system, you don't only certify the system, but you certify the process of producing the system. Uh, so uh, you have a minimum level of assurance that this small fix is going uh, to be safe and it will be certified then in the next window.
one of the things they actually did as a small company to prove that you shouldn't pick the MSA. One of the, the things I've seen is that systems that you don't think are connected can be attacked. Um, a friend of mine showed that actually it's now not difficult to go in and tap phone systems or what was considered to be secure links which were carrying un unencrypted data. So I think people need to be very careful about these things because they may assume that they are on a safe system but you can't guarantee that somebody hasn't physically compromised the security or just messed up a configuration and left the system open to the world. Thank you. Uh, there was another question. In your slides you mentioned that uh, you wanted to have a period of five years where backports from upstream uh, would be integrated like uh, SOC support. Um, so the just to confirm that the intention is to get all the required stuff mainline first and validate it there and only then backport? Because I, in the current environment I don't see the required SOC support happening mainline in that time frame for systems interesting for you without additional uh, effort. But it's 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 getting better. So that it's uh, it also they feel the pressure, and all these companies mentioned here have this pain at this point. Um, so I think things will change. Maybe it takes a few more years, but it's changing. Okay. One more. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> so you're saying that not only are you doing security fix backports, but you're also doing feature backports for a long time. Um, I've been on projects like this where we started with a kernel, say it was say it's kernel 3.8, and we've backported security fixes, and those were easy. And then the customer wanted, oh, by the way, we want this latest USB fix. And by the time you're like nearly a thousand patches down the road, it's becoming increasingly difficult to take stuff from upstream because upstream has moved in certain ways. And are there plans to have increased effort as the difficulty of the task increases? Um, I, are these are people committing, who are going to commit to this five to 10 year plan also gonna to commit to actually down the road, we need more engineering effort on this? It's, it's hard to give a general uh, answer on that. So I, I, I think um, we, are, we have to decide case by case and we are aligned to the requirements of, of, of the companies who are participating and um, wh where this is used. So um, at, at the end, yeah, we'll start with a case by case decision and maybe after two, three years we can, can give you a general statement was was the best practice and what we learned. So, do um, you want to comment on, from the LTSI view? <laughs> Maybe another comment on the uh, feature backporting discussion. Um, yesterday, uh, at the LTSI presentation, I took a look at the current state of the uh, LTSI patch set, and it's basically, uh, yeah, three dozen patches from Altera support for their uh, SOC. 
and um, some 150 or something patches from Renesas. And those are not just backports. So th those are basically, from my point of view, uh, patches that have not been reviewed by the community. It's obviously, Greg does what he can, but he's not an ARM SOC maintainer or a subsystem maintainer. And so things will get through which would not have been uh, accepted by the respective subsystem maintainers. So you will be basing on a kernel that has drifted from uh, just fewer, uh, pure mainline feature backports. I have a comment on that. Um, I think that for the backporting effort of features, I think that LSK is a good example. At least it's the, the example that we, we are looking at. Uh, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm saying that it's working for the uh, Linaro members. And the fact that we are ba that we are taking a look at LTSI doesn't mean that we're going to take the code. Uh, consumer industry has different requirements that uh, that CAP. So um, the fact is that this is a uh, this haven't been done. So we have to base our first work and learn uh, on 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 projects that are doing this. And basically, there are two, right? LSK and LTSI, so we are taking a close look and we will have to learn our own lessons. Uh, the fact is that these companies are already doing this behind the firewall. So it's, it's about putting this together and bringing more people. It's not completely new to them. They are already doing it. So there are tons of lessons that they have learned inside that we are trying to bring outside of the firewall. So. So I'm not, I'm not saying it's, I, and no, nobody is saying it's going to be easy, right? But it's possible, and the fact that it's possible is that they are already doing it, and the economics work. It's just that we need to maybe learn how they are doing it, and from that and from other projects, just come to a conclusion of how this can be done in a way that is sustainable. I, I'm not convinced that the, the work that has been happening internally in the, in the companies is actually working. Maybe it ha hasn't shown to be failing yet. And it's well. just, I'm not convinced that doing this together with the same approach works better. Uh, it, it's the same case as some years ago with, with, with the mobile industry. Uh, we were not convinced, right? And it's working. It's not working well, <laughs> but it's working. I mean, it's, so it's, it's working way better than when we started. It, it, for this, it must be working much, much better than for the mobile industry. Agree, agree. The challenge is high. Everybody, uh, everybody agrees on that. So thank you very much for attending.